Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. In this video, I will be doing a quick repair on a 5.9 Cummins natural gas engine that runs one of our screw compressors. As you can see uh, here, uh, the original one uh, cracks and breaks, so I will be making one out of all steel and repairing the manifold uh, along with it. One thing about my videos, you'll notice I'm always using about any old uh, scrap iron that I can find uh, to make the repairs. I don't always have the luxury of going out to a nice new uh, iron bin and pulling off the material. Here I'm uh, softening up the manifold a little bit. I'm going to have to drill those studs out. Uh, so just getting them nice and red hot and letting them naturally cool uh, will soften them up and make it a little easier for machining. This will be uh, one of the flanges that will bolt directly to the manifold. And it originally uh, was some kind of a bracket off a Kubota tractor. Here I'm just making a little template to transfer over to the plate uh, for machining. And here I'm just squishing a piece of pipe to fit the flange a little bit better and it'll get welded up to the flange and then machined. I want to thank all my new subscribers. Um, if you're new to the channel, I work for a small company that uh, rents natural gas compressors out and I basically uh, help keep them running. I don't always have the luxury of doing a super first class job. Uh, if it's up to my boss, and my boss is the owner of the company, um, if it's up to him, he's fine with just a flame cut, plasma, whatever. Uh, let's just get the thing back online. Uh, so this is one of those kind of rush jobs. Now normally my go-to is always a flame cut or plasma. Uh, for cutting out holes um, but here I'm going to show a couple different ways here I just basically drilled four corner holes and then I took an end mill and then just started running around in the mill to where I had the hole out of it here's a plate that I found um, like I said before if it was up to my boss he would be totally fine with the torched out the outside but I try to do a, a little bit nicer job when possible. This flange will get machined in order to fit nicely to the manifold. Here I'm making the, the other end that will just bolt up to uh, the exhaust system. So it's pretty, uh, pretty forgiving. It has a pretty good sized gasket uh, that seals it. And here I just bolted it up to uh, another chunk. You know, in order to hold it in the lathe, uh, to clean it up a little bit. Here I just kind of blew the center of it out, and it'll just get chucked back up in the, uh, the lathe and uh, trued up. Here I got this flange pretty much ready to weld up to the pipe. And here the uh, flange that fits up against the uh, manifold is getting machined. It only uses a really thin metal gasket. So you gotta have a nice flat surface. Here I'm just clocking the bolt pattern uh, before I weld it up.
I definitely do my share of cast iron repairs, but when you get an exhaust system where the cast iron starts cracking and breaking like that, you're better off just throwing it away and building something new or buying something new. All right, here we got the uh, little adapter uh, done, ready to go on. Uh, but we need to address the manifold now. Uh, so now I'll machine and then uh, drill out the uh, broken studs. And what we normally do is just drill all the way through on these and um, where you don't use the threaded part of the manifold, you go all the way through and then uh, put a nut underneath. That way if you have to take it apart out in the field and you have a problem with something broken, you know, you don't need to pull the manifold off and bring it in to repair it. You know, you can just cut the nut off and drive out the piece and put another bolt in. Here I got my Criterion adjustable fly cutter uh, surfacing the top of the manifold. And I'm adding another little tapered chisel just to kind of keep the manifold nice and, uh, nice and level. These manifolds tend to get extremely hard, um, so when, when machining them, you just got to take a, take light cuts and carbide. Here all we're needing is a nice surface around the outside that's flat that mates up to the uh, the other adapter that I made and now we're ready to just drill out the holes. The milling machine always makes removing studs so nice because as you're drilling you can make any adjustments with the table you need uh, to center everything up.
And here's the bottom of the original bolts uh, by drilling them out with a larger drill bit um, that's the result you get Here I'm showing how I had it clamped up in the vise. It's just a six inch mill vise. And I have two wrist pins that are solid, solid wrist pins that just go from uh, the jaws over to the two bolts um, that bolt it on. And there's a little wedge just to uh, keep it perfectly level and help keep the chattering down a little bit. We got two bolts that just go right through, no problem. Those two, we have to relieve a little material off the manifold in order for the head of the bolt to have clearance or the nut to have clearance, whichever way um, we decide to put the bolt. As you can see, there's lots of material right there. So removing a little bit of material is no big deal. On this one, I just flipped the grinder over and uh, plenty of room to get in there and uh, relieve it a little bit. Now, like I say, there's lots of material there. If there wasn't, uh, many times we've just ground one side of the head of the bolt, dropped them in there, um, and had no issue. Here, I'm just doing a little removing with a die grinder, and then I'll go in with another small little grinder and just give me a little bit more clearance. You don't want to tighten it up if it's going to be tweaking the bolt, you know, because that's a uh, pretty much guarantee it's going to stress the bolt and it will break. Here about the time I thought I had everything ready for uh, the boss to go put it back on. He decides he needs a, uh, he wants a three quarter coupler cut in half and welded to it uh, where he could put his emission testers in. Normally the emission testers are an 18 millimeter. Um, we didn't have any at the time and he just wanted uh, to cut a collar and weld it on. So, so that's what he's going to get. By welding the collar on, that allowed uh, it to get put back on. Uh, the boss was uh, needing to put all this, you know, back on the same day. Um, so anyway, that's all done. Went out. This is the second one. I need to make another one. The other engine is still running, but it's got cracks and issues with it. So here I'm just showing a different way of removing material. Uh, here I just went around with a drill bit, drilled some holes went over to the press and just press out the slug. 
and then I'll go into the bridge port and uh, clean it up. I know everybody doesn't have a torch or plasma uh, at home, and if they had to, uh, you know, cut a hole through something, there are many ways to do it. Here I got the pipe squished already, ready to fit the flange. Uh, the flange, I guess I probably could have did a little better job of cleaning the inside up a little bit more, but once it's welded on and bolted on, nobody will ever see it. Here on my first pass, I had some porosity. Um, had the back door open, and it doesn't take much of a breeze to kind of blow away the... Uh, are gone and then you got uh, got some issues but anyway put another pass on it and ground and clean it up a bit You can see the original one opens up uh, much larger than the piping, but it narrows down coming out of the manifold, and we've never had a problem. Um, you know, as long as we're sizing it to the port coming out of the manifold, we haven't had an issue. And remember, these are natural gas that, uh, you know, 1800 RPM would be uh, cranked up pretty good for them. Here I don't use an edge finder much on stuff non-critical. I just put the cutter in and, um, you know, just go up where it kisses. And just half the uh, thickness of the cutter and half the, the distance of the uh, whatever tube I'm boring and away we go. I keep a lot of old junk in mills and to me as long as I can go over on the grinder and grind and clean them up um, and use them as a drill bit, uh, they still work fine. Uh, the one one inch one, uh, as you can see, wasn't working so well. So here I dropped down a little bit smaller one that at one time was pretty bad shape and I just kind of ground it. You can see where I've kind of ground it to where it'll uh, pop a hole in it. And so I, anyway, I get a lot of use out of old junk in mills. Here I'm back to the one inch in mill and I just went over to the, to the grinder and just uh, cleaned it up a little bit. I know the first adapter I needed to get out so it could get put it back on. This one I got a little bit more time. So I got the correct 18 millimeter bushing uh, for the oxygen sensor and I like to get it welded in where it's in the stream of the exhaust. Here I'm just using an old spark plug just to kind of hold it in position uh, while I weld it up.
since this job we got our TIG machine back up and going, uh, that particular weld would be more of a, a TIG job. Anyway, our TIG machine was down, uh, so I used what I got. Anyway, this one here is ready to uh, go out and be installed. Nothing fancy about this primer. Um, it'll burn off as soon as they run it. Uh, it'll just kind of help keep it getting rusted up until they get a chance to put it on. Here to boss bought a new manifold uh, just in case uh, when they go to swap it out if there's an issue uh, we got a manifold to put on it. Here I thought I'd show a clip of it actually uh, up and running. This has been a couple weeks after it got installed and this is the first one. The second one has not been done yet uh, but these compressors these are what we call our baby compressors they just run a small little screw and you can see here the exhaust just up and to through the muffler out the top and they just sit here and run 24 7 Here you can see where somebody attempted to weld um, a little coupler right to the cast iron portion of the adapter, which didn't hold up. It broke right out. And then you can see an ear that's got a crack running through it. So the second one I made will replace this one. For those that follow my channel, you know that I like a good deal on tools. And I pick them up uh, whenever I can. And I want to thank Chuck over to Outside Screwball for putting on the uh, meet and greet that we had not too long ago. And thank you for Andy for opening up his shop. Um, everybody had a great time and there was uh, plenty of tools for everybody there. First up we have a Chandler Duplex boring facing head. Unlike a Criterion boring head where you have to turn it off to make your adjustments, these are made where you can actually feed it out while it's turning. And that top ring you actually just grab while it's spinning, and when you grab it, it feeds the cutter out. And these are pretty awesome if you're doing any kind of like snap ring grooves or o-ring grooves. And then you just reverse it to uh, retract the cutter back in. So as it's spinning, you just reach over, grab it, feed the cutter out. There's stops that you can put on it to adjust how far out it goes. And I do need to make a little T-slotted tool holder for it. Okay, here we got a bore mate, another boring facing tool. Uh, the difference about this one is none of this main housing is rotating as you're, um, as you're machining. That handle there feeds the cutter in and out, so you have a uh, much better control over the cutter rather than reaching and grabbing a wheel or whatever. And right there, you just uh, attach that right to the spindle. Once it's tightened up, then you tighten the screw right there to the quill, and that locks it right to the, right to the mill. You can see here as I work the wheel, you can see the cutter portion moving in and out, you know, that holds your cutter. I will need to get an extended draw bar in order to put this on my bridge port. 
um, because I will have to uh, bring the quill down in order for this to clamp to it. Now there's a couple good reviews out there um, from a couple of my friends that are YouTube creators. Uh, the first one is Chuck Bomarito at Outside Screwball. About seven years ago he did a really nice review. And then a couple years ago Stan at Bar Z or Shaden HKW is what he goes by. Uh, did a really nice review also of them. So I'd suggest checking them out. I think this is the first Char's tool uh, that I now own. A uh, nice little sign plate. Here we got a 40 taper end mill holder, um, and it fits the my vertical head for my K and T horizontal mill. And in here, you got a whole bunch of boxes of these, and they're exactly half inch measurement one way, and just slightly over on the other way. So I don't I don't know what I'll use them for, but I thought they were kind of cool. And any old Lefkin stuff, I'm a sucker for. I bought this particular cutter because I have a bunch of the square inserts. And I just picked these old hacksaws up. When you got a channel that's called Old Iron Machine Works, I guess you need to have some old iron. Can you have too many hacksaws? Another gentleman there had a whole bunch of inserts, and he had these large inserts, all brand new, um, and he was selling them at a killer deal, and I haven't looked yet to see if I have a holder that will fit them, uh, but I will have to come up with a holder, but they'll be handy on my, on my larger lathe. Here's a stare at one to two blade mic. Super handy if you gotta get into something that has some grooves. And here's an old brown and sharp mic. Zero to one, and I'll be honest with you, uh, I'm not sure what the correct tactical name is for this style uh, mic. And this was actually given to me by Andy. It is a mechanical tachometer. And he told me that every shop needs to have a mechanical tachometer. So thank you very much, Andy. And there's an old uh, brown and sharp death gauge, which I thought was kind of kind of neat. It's amazing how accurate they are with young eyes, old eyes, not so much.
If you're not familiar with these style crimpers, they're designed where they will not release until you've gave it a full crimp. And here's a brand new wafering diamond blade. Whenever I'm buying several items from one person, um, I'll normally kind of get an idea for what he's wanting, you know, if he really wants to sell or not. And if he wants to move stuff, uh, then I'll just kind of start making some piles and then just get a final price for, for everything. So I threw this on the pile. Not really sure exactly what it is. I have ideas. I've talked to some people about ideas. But if any of you know exactly what this was made for, uh, please leave it in the comments. Here we have an older Starrett 78 inch micrometer. Everything seems to be in a really nice shape. Everything spins smooth. Locks work. I do like the older Lufkin tools, especially when they've had very little use. It appears this has everything in order to measure from 9 inch to 12 inch. Here another one of my friends, uh, Dean Crawford, at the R Cave shop. He had some stuff on a table and he had two of these uh, clamps, which other than the uh, rust on them, uh, awesome shape. They don't look like they've had much use at all. Uh, but anyway, check out uh, Gene's channel. He's just getting uh, an Inco laid up and running that he built a beautiful base for. And he's recently restored a shaper, and he's got a lot of shaper action. And Anyway, we're checking out. And last but not least, my good friend Mike bought a whole box full of drill bits. And these four were more Staper 5, which he uh, didn't have anything to run them. So I appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. Once again, thank you to all my new subscribers. If you're not a subscriber and you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button. Thumbs up are always appreciated. Thanks for watching.